being here with us tonight at Echo Base TV, where community happens. Hello there. Hit the like button. Share the stream. Say coach is better than Nick. Say it. Say it! Okay. Hey everybody, what is going on? Great to see you here at your Echo Base Network. We're going to get into some, a lot of spicy things today. Woo wee. It's been on my mind. Today we're going to have a show about it with all the other things that we're talking about. I got this weird hair like in my vision. I don't know what's going on, but hey, I'm in 4K. Can you see it? Can you see it? Anybody? Okay. All right. Well, anyways. Uh, hail to Gary North, Debbie Young, Marino's Goat, <laughs> Everscale, Darth Jader, Matuine. The answer was yes, Matuine. Let's talk. Uh, Blood Guilty Gaming, D. Caree, Darth Scipio, Aaron Ratliff, Shrike1988, Humphrey Bear, Venger, Aurora Uplinks, Lombardi1969, Papa Palpatine's Pizza Padawan, Jim S., Matt Risman, Asin Khan, Davish, Nighthawk, Randy Capola, Mary Lanning, Angelina Serini, Unlimited Power, Star Wars Mom, Freaking Wiener, Spaceship Vampire, and Andrew Wall. Hey, Andrew, guess what? That was quite refreshing, son. That was for you. Okay, so anyways, uh, tonight's agenda, as always, we discuss the highs and lows of our favorite entertainment together with you, the most important part of the channel. We have a long list of things that we're going to get into. Uh, you know, you saw the thumbnail. We're going to talk about some... Um, how do I want to say this? A topic 
that could get very spicy. People can, woo! And we hope that we get some of that tonight. We really, really do. Um, as always, guys, uh, there are four ways that you can support us here on the channel. You can become an EBN member, like many people just did with that gifted membership from Jedi Master Lawrence. Holy moly, she just gifted 10 Echo Base Network memberships. Welcome to all 10 people. Thank you so much, Jedi Master Lawrence, for that incredible gift. Uh, so join us over on our EBN memberships. We got four levels. We got Patreon. Nick and I just watched X Men 97 episode five. Literally stopped it 30 minutes ago. And it is now up on Patreon. So you can go and enjoy that. We have an awesome merch store where I have not made a new shirt in like four months. That will be changing very soon. I promise. I've already been thinking about it. I'm feeling some Dune, everybody. I'm feeling some Dune. Super Chats, great way to join the conversation. Thank you for any and all Super Chats and Member Chats, of course. So uh, that is our little bit of house cleaning like we like we do here at the beginning of the show. Uh, Nick will be here momentarily. We have the moth in the background. He's ready to roll. The DA is on the way. He'll be here in about five minutes. Um, so open it up here tonight, you know, I would say rip, I would say rest in peace and I'm close to saying it. I'm very close, but there's just something about it that prevents me from saying rest in peace. OJ Simpson passed away today. So everybody post. Uh, whatever you want to say about the passing away of O.J. Simpson. You know, I hate that he had cancer. I also hate that his wife was murdered. Um, so, yeah, if, uh, you know, if you feel so inclined to say rest in peace, then I totally understand that, and I do not, uh, you know... <laughs> See, that's what I'm I wasn't going to go there. <laughs> but some people are, you know, that cuts very deep. I, I Did I say something? I, I'm just saying, I don't know. Oh, God, why did I even bring this up? Uh, <laughs> and I'm drinking water tonight. I mean, wow. Um, you know, not trying to, to you know, um, insult anyone there. Uh, but it's a very uh, divisive thing all the way back to the trial. Um, you know, I truly believe that he was guilty. He, you know, it, it is what it is. So anyways, uh, oh my, says Star Wars mom. Um, rest in peace, Norberg. That's what we'll do. O.J. Simpson was very good in The Naked Gun. The end. <laughs> Indifference. I don't know how to feel about it. Yep. The juice is no longer loose. Oh, boy. Lombardi 1969. Rip. Rest in peace. OJ can now rest easy knowing that his wife's killer is dead. <laughs> Andrew... You are freaking hilarious, dude. You are always making me crack up. Yeah, you're right, Andrew. You're you're right. I need to post that on Twitter. I really do. I don't know much about O.J. Simpson. Totally cool, Mary. It's not. It's all good. Uh, nobody lose your head now. Uh, oh, Debbie. He is now getting his judgment by the one judge that counts. Woo! My goodness. Amen, girl. So, anyways, uh, too soon. Too soon. Hope OJ burns in purgatory for eternity. White Bronco funeral procession. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it, Star Wars mom is rolling. 
Oh my goodness, we are being bad tonight. OJ ain't running through any more airports or riding any more Broncos. Oh my gosh, y'all. Woo! <laughs> the coffin don't fit. You must have quit. <laughs> Oh, I need somebody to here to get me back on track. You! The coffin don't fit! I've been seeing these one-liners online all day today, and, and as bad as they are, it still makes me chuckle, Coach. It still makes me chuckle. Why can't I think of something that funny, man? That is I so know. funny. People are much quicker than we are on these. Oh, things. yeah. Oh, that's really good right there. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well... Um, all right. Well, Nick will be joining us momentarily. We have now done our OJ Simpson uh, rest in peace. We got uh, some member chats and super chats that we want to run through. Mr. Risman, if you will go ahead and Let's highlight those. Do Let's do it. Uh, really funny stuff there. Austin Khan with five pounds. Uh, Eid Mur Murbarak to coach, which means, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, blessings to you. I believe okay. uh, everyone on the panel, Nick and everyone on the chat and formal. Austin, thank you so much, my friend. We greatly appreciate that. If I, if I didn't translate that correctly, let me know in the comments. Uh, but I believe it means blessings to you or you are blessed today or, or something along those lines. So thank Very you, nice. my friend. And right back at you, right back at you. All right, keep them rolling there. GraphWeb with a $2 super chat. Hashtag cancel Disney Plus. The most consistent man on YouTube is GraphWeb, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, my brother. Go get your GraphWeb t-shirt in the EBN store today. Do it. Yeah, do it. Jedi Master Lawrence gifted 10 Echo Base Network memberships. Welcome to all of the new members. Give her a thank you in the chat if you received one of those. She is awesome. Thank you so much, Erica, for your support. You are the GOAT. I know. I noticed Nick was the recipient of one of those. So Nick again oh, is... Yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <sighs> Whoa! Debbie also gifted 10 Echo Base Network membership, so that's 20 right there. Amazing. 20 new EBN members. So yes, thank sir. you. We just had a member stream a few days ago. Uh, man, we got good stuff. And guys, if you've not joined our Patreon, it's, man, I would put our Patreon up against anybody's. I don't know who else's Patreon's got Dune 2 up already. Not saying that ours does, but if we were to put Dune 2 up on the Patreon, it's one of the first ones I would know about. If uh, we did that. If we did that. If I watched it today. Again? If. <laughs> if. <laughs> and I did. I did. But, you know, we got a friend over there in California that didn't like the the Dune Part 2. Oh, he I, hated it. He can't I, wait, I, I, can't I wait to poop all over I don't Dune get 3. what dude's problem is, but all right. So, ah, well, there he is. Let's bring him in. Oop. Oh, we got to we gotta play the music. Hang on. Yep. Go, go, go. Somebody made go. him a killer intro. What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA. And real quick, before we get to the I mean, Yo, who needs what's Nick? What's going on? Who, what's who that? Needs, who needs Nick anyways? Hey, man. He ain't here. He ain't. <laughs> the show goes on <laughs> without him, right? <laughs> Nick! Hello. <laughs> Hello, McFly. Uh, man. There he is. The He's got, man. like, the whole Tron thing going in the background. But no. The seat is empty, ladies and gentlemen. The His camera's is, ready. His camera's ready. He he's ready. <laughs> the occupant is not here. Let's hit Mac Dween. Mac Dween, member for twenty four months, celebrating my second anniversary of being a member of this crazy channel. Yes, got something we're going to talk about uh, involving Matt Dween here in in the show on the show tonight that I'm very excited about. So, on my way. Me too. Me too. I already got oh, my. Oh, you're playing a game, Nick. You're playing a game. No, no, he's coming back. He said he was coming back from the store. He's coming back from the store. Oh, oh okay. 
He said his background <laughs> is not Tron. It's oh, the, he said uh, not Tron. The, <laughs> I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Get your butt in your no, on no, the no. show. All right. Anyways, uh, man, we got some really good topics. Does that catch us up? We got one more? Yeah, no, we're good to go. Oh, uh, uh, Rick Carrera just be- just became a member now. What? We have Jedi a brand new Knight. member. Jedi Rick Knight. Carrera has become a Jedi Knight. Welcome to Rick. He's our 21st new member tonight. That was not a free membership. He paid for that one himself. Rick, thank you so much for joining the Echo Base Network. Member family, I got to do this one. This one, my friend, is for you. That's me and the DA right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, let's jump right into it. All right, this is going to be fast moving because I feel like the the what I think is going to be the main topic tonight. There's gonna there's gonna be a lot to be said about it, and and I definitely want the chat all in on it. Chat, your voice tonight is is you know very meaningful it's always meaningful but i'm really looking to see what you guys have to say uh starting off the show tonight with a little star wars update and this one has been giving people some hope i was fortunate enough to be invited over to a great live stream last saturday night uh where uh derek was talking about this news. Uh, Bo Williman. Now, I know he did Peaky Blinders, and apparently he is known as a exceptional writer. Peaky and Blinders? He is... Go ahead. He did Andor. He did Andor. He did Andor. Andor. Oh, did oh, Andor. Wait, wait, wait. Did oh, I, I got I, I, I think, think DA's got an Andor. Okay, all right. Yep. So, uh, yeah. An, a writer of Andor, a writer of Peaky Blinders, and he is now partnered with James Mangold to do the Dawn of the Jedi movie with them. Now, first of all, we know how things go at Lucasfilm when they bring anyone in to a project. The life expectancy of that person is about half of what a normal person would be. You know, maybe he stays around. Maybe he makes this a successful thing. Maybe he writes a good a good show. Maybe he writes a good movie. Maybe well, he doesn't. You- maybe he gets fired. Maybe there's creative differences. Anything can happen at Lucasfilm under this regime. But this news, is this good news for Star Wars or not? We're talking about the Dawn of the Jedi movie, the one that goes way, way, way back. With James Mangold. This is not the Ray movie. This mm-hmm. is not the Grogu in Mandalorian movie. This is the third one. So, uh, Risman, we're going to start with you. Uh, what are your thoughts about this news? Well, well I, I know, know it's it, 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 oh, still, still hear the echo. echo. Is, is, is it, it me? All of us? I hear nothing. Derek, Derek do you hear it? This... I hear, I hear an echo. echo. Um, pop, pop out, out for just, just a, a second. second there. Yeah, there you go. Hello, How about now. now. Hello, nope. my microphone. I, I think, think it's me. me. I'll, I'll pop, pop out. out and come Macaroni and cheese, pizza rolls, hot pockets. Okay, now this is just awkward. Okay, so you know, one time at band camp. Okay, here they go. All right, is that hey. better? Uh. You Don't wasn't know. hearing nothing anyway, huh? Yeah, I wasn't hearing nothing. Uh, okay. Right. I, I think Hi. I had another instance of a uh, stream yard up, so I think How that's what now? it was for me. Okay. I think we're I think we're I think we did it. We're good. 
I think we did it. Yeah. Man, y'all boomered that one up good. <laughs> it was, it could, could have very well been me. Yeah. But, Trying but to run I, a professional show here, fellas. <laughs> Call but, Echo Base Network, right? Yeah, we were definitely got the echo part down. <laughs> yep. Oh, that used to actually happen to us all the time. We'd go live and we were running a program called Wirecast and there would be massive, crazy echoes. About, echo Base is back. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, all right. But yeah, was, Richmond, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what I was trying to say before I was echoing is, you know, it doesn't always mean anything, but he did he was nominated for an Emmy for his Andor episodes. He's the one who wrote the what no way the one way out. Um, all that prison yeah. stuff was was Bo. So I hope they let him write. The guy knows how to write, and he seems to know how he, he has some familiarity with Star Wars. To me, that's two legs up than the folks that have normally been writing some of these things, right? So so for me, I'm kind of like, I really I really wasn't super excited for this because I was like, I don't know that Mangold is known for his writing necessarily. And maybe after Indy 5, he's not <laughs> known for his directing either. But but this gives me some this gives me some some hope. And actually, I'd like to see this movie come before the Ray movie, personally. Um, yeah. just just given yeah. this movie. Oh, yeah. I might be more interested in this movie than any of the other ones. Yeah. And I, and I don't know anything about it. Yeah. But the setting of the movie is the furthest away from the sequel trilogy. Ain't that the truth. So maybe that's why I'm the most interested in that one. Sound Surgeon basically hit what you just said. Didn't uh, Jim Mangold mess up Indiana Jones 5? Oh, hell no. Anything with that guy is an automatic disqualification for me because of what he did to Indiana Jones 5. That's fair criticism. It is. It is. I agree. And listen, I'm a um before Indy 5, I was, you know, like a James Mangold guy. You know, you can't take away from what he's already done. He gave us great films, Logan. He gave us the Wolverine. I think both of those films are excellent. Uh, he made Walk the Line. He made Ford versus Ferrari. All of these films are great films. All right. Uh, he did the um, 310 to Yuma. That was another one. Great Western. 310 to Yuma. Loved it. OK, so you can't take that away from the guy. But he did also make Indiana Jones in the Dial of Destiny. And it's like, OK, is that more Lucasfilm? Or is that more James Mangle? You know, it's still on his resume and he has to take the L for that. But it is, you know, oh, yeah, you did like that movie, didn't you, coach? I liked it better than most. <laughs> OK. I, I right, mean, I haven't. Right. So I haven't watched it again. I only watched it in the theater that one time. That tells um, me everything I need to know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't care to watch it again. I just it, it was kind of like Madam Webb. I didn't think it was as bad as the Internet said it was. Fair enough. But it was Fair not enough. a good movie. Fair it enough. was not okay. a good movie, you know. Um, but yeah, mixing Mangold with this writer um, who did write the Narkina 5 arc in Andor, that proves, to, uh, look, he, the guy knows how to write, okay? Let's just talk about Bo Willimon. Bo Willimon knows how to write, all right? He he was the showrunner for the first four seasons of House of Cards. House of Cards is a great show, for, especially the first four seasons, okay? So the guy knows how to write. Clearly with Andor, he knows his way around Star Wars at least a little bit. You know, so now it's really up to are they going to leave this guy alone? Are they going to leave James Mangold alone and just allow them to make a great film? Or is Kathleen Kennedy, nope, I got to have my fingerprints all over this. Let's put a chick in it. The first Jedi's got to be a woman. You know, like, are, are we going to see that kind of nonsense? Is that what's coming? Because if they just let these two guys make a great film, I think they can do it. But if they insist on the message coming and shining through, and when is Kathleen Kennedy not insisted on that? Um, yeah, it might be a dumpster fire. You know, so, and, and, but and go ahead. personally, personally for me, I think KK ruined Indiana Jones five. I think, so do James, I. I think James Mangold directed the best bag of poop he could, he could direct by that point. But I think that thing was so far gone by the time they pieced it all back together, like Frankenstein's monster. I'm like, I, I don't, <laughs> I, I, I'm not ready to Did indict Mangold yet on that. Cause I didn't I they let um, uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge like write some of this? I think they allowed her to write a piece of it or a corner of this film. Of that film. I mean, again, you just got to have good people in the room as long as everybody, you know. Yeah, and um, 
Mangold isn't off the hook with me because he did kind of disrespect the fan base. I, I yep. Yeah, the Twitter. And I saw Aaron or someone talking about his Twitter stuff. Twitter stuff wasn't yeah. cool. Wasn't yeah, cool. not at all. Whatever no, happened, you can't do that. No, just say no. I hope you enjoy the movie and shut the heck up. Right. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. You know, uh, these these directors and writers and actors and all these cats in Hollywood, they need to stop talking in, on Twitter and social media before a film comes out because they almost nine times out of ten are going to say the wrong thing to just make somebody upset. You know, Dev Patel just did that with this uh, Monkey Man movie. He came oh, out right. and he made some comments regarding, oh, it's a love letter to transgender, this, that, and the third. And next thing you know, everybody, oh my God, I can't watch this movie now. I saw the movie. I thought it was all right but you know he came out and made his statements and just chases people away you know let people just watch the movie and figure it out for themselves and that was such a small part of the movie and and those and those actors actresses those those folks kicked ass in the movie right i mean yeah but i mean it wasn't a big it wasn't like it was the central theme of the film was just kind of you know it was it was dumb for him to even make that comment but yeah i think mangold isn't off the hook Okay, it's not off the hook, at least for me. Um, He has, you know, he has some red in his ledger. He's going to have to make up for it with a good Star Wars film. Maybe he does that, you know, if he's left to his own devices. Because, look, the thing that Bo Willimon shows me is that they can make a good Star Wars project if they want to. All right. Mm -hmm. It's not like they can't do it, you know. Clearly, they did that with Andor. Some people, you know, different opinions on Andor, but most most people, all right, say Andor is one of the best things that we've gotten, you know, definitely from Disney Star Wars and maybe in the franchise, you know, in terms of the world building. And then his arc is probably the most memorable arc in in, in that show. So they they can do it if they are left alone. And that's the question I have. Will Kathleen Kennedy leave this guy alone? Just let him go out there and make a make a good no. movie. I don't she think won't. so. <laughs> yeah, that's we, we, we know time and time again that yeah. she does not give directors a whole lot of creative control. Yeah. After after what JJ and Ryan did. They're carrying yeah. out her vision, they're carrying out Filoni's vision. Look how many look how many writers and directors leave Lucasfilm projects. And it just wasn't very long ago somebody was saying I'm not I wouldn't take a job there because I need freedom to tell my story. Yeah. I don't even remember who that was, but that was big like three weeks ago. I mean, yeah. well, Lucasfilm it, doesn't give you that. And at this point, who wants to risk their resume? I mean, every everybody who's come along who has had some chops has had their resume tarnished. It's so fantastically bad. Has had like their James resume Dangle. tarnished <laughs> by their by their coming into what they thought was a wonderful opportunity and getting jerked around and screwed over. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're like, for, and everyone else is like, forget about this. I don't want, I don't want to take that chance. So, all right. I think this is a fair question. Uh, you know, fix me on this. If you, if you can, with the exception of Lucas himself and the original cast, which you could make the argument you could make the argument that Star Wars didn't didn't boost Mark Hamill after 1984. It actually hurt him, even though he was he became a star. He became a celebrity. Harrison Ford's obvious. Carrie Fisher. How many people, directors, writers, actors, has Star Wars had a propelling impact on? Look at what Timothy Chalamet has done right now. Look what he's doing. Have we seen have we seen anybody just rocket off because of their involvement with Star Wars? I can't Natalie think of Portman. one. No? Natalie Portman, maybe? Maybe. I mean, yeah, she, you uh, know. I, I could see that. You you could definitely make a case for that. Uh But uh, outside of that, I don't think um I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think anybody's you know, like either you came in already, you know, a known entity, a known quantity in in Hollywood, or you just kind of just faded into Hayden Christensenness and just, eh, you're just the guy that was in Star Wars stuff, and that was it. You know, I was thinking he was in my mind, Dan. Rick McCallum, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Left yep. the country and won't even talk about Star Wars. Well, and even even Ewan wouldn't talk about it for the longest time. I just I just caught up. Uh, a variety did a 
him doing a watch back on some of his famous things like train spotting and all the different things that he had done. And, and of course, they, they had to do Kenobi. So I was just so curious to see what he said about that. And he was just reminiscing about his experience with the prequels. And basically, he said, listen, they were there. after I was done with Revenge of the Sith, he's like, I don't want to have anything to do with it. He said, it wasn't really a shining spot in my career at that moment. You know, he's there was it was a very vitriolic, right? He said, he said, we didn't have a good time from a reception perspective. He said, and I, he said, I kind of put it out of my mind until much later when everyone started asking me, are you going to do it again? Are you going to do it again? Are you going to do it again? And he was like, he's like, somehow it got popular, right? You know, and, and yeah. so, so even from Ewan's perspective, I, I think he came back more as a result of, of fan requests than he ever planned to come back to the franchise. It wasn't, wasn't on his radar. Yeah. So uh, proto topics here, Portman, McGregor, and Adam Driver. Uh, I would argue that Adam Driver kind of went flat uh, after the sequels. If mm -hmm. anybody from the sequels had stock that went up, I, in my opinion, it would be Oscar Isaac. Um, I, have to, I have to tell you, everything I've seen Adam Driver in has been so much better than his portrayal as um, yeah. Kylo Bren, whether it was Black Kate, Kate Klansman, whether it was House of Gucci, whether it was Ferrari. I mean, every everything that I've seen him do has shown a range of acting and has really allowed him to be an actor. And 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 the good thing is, because he primarily wore the mask and all that, in the sequels, I don't see Kylo Ren when I see Adam Driver acting. Right? Yeah. I see Adam yeah. Driver acting in a new in a new role. To me, he's knocked it out of the park every yeah. other time. I, I as Kylo Ren, for me, he was kind of meh. Right. Oh, I certainly agree. Well, with I, do do you think? I guess the way I'm looking at it is who's like star continued to ascend versus you know it just kind of flatlined after after that and i yeah i think with adam driver it's kind of like yeah he's in stuff but would he be like a major would you consider him a major hollywood star right now i don't think he's really like a big star not at least not to me you know i know who he is obviously but i don't and, think he's by a the way star. I I agree with Graf Webb. That was a miss, right? That dinosaur movie was horrible. <laughs> yeah. Horrible. Let's walk out of the theater bad. But I, again, everyone has an off movie, right? I guess I'm thinking like, look what the Lord of the Rings did for Andy Serkis. Mm. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, I don't and, think anybody in Star Wars, with the exception of maybe Harrison Ford, can claim that, you know, it. after this thing, it, it took off. It. Yeah, I don't think anybody and, and, can claim and, that. Can we name a director that, wow, they did such an amazing job in Star Wars. They're everything well, they outside do. Outside of George Lucas, like the first six films, right? The outside of George Lucas, it's really just Erwin Kirshner and um and um Richard McQuan. So really it was it's always been George Lucas. You know, nobody's ever looked at a director, you know, saying, Yeah, I mean, these guys had careers prior to George. You know, it's not like they came in and elevated their careers based on that. But well, they're I mean, just okay, like so you could definitely help. say Irvin Kirshner was elevated, but 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 here's a question about Harrison Ford. If Harrison Ford was an Indiana Jones, do you mm. think his career I, I would posit that Harrison Ford's career skyrocketed more because of his portrayal of Indiana, Indiana Jones? Than I it would did at that. Han Solo. Yeah. Ooh, what? Yeah. I I would put it out there. I would de because because Indiana Jones continued in the zeitgeist, right? Indiana Jones kept going long after Star Wars was on hiatus, right? He was known as Indiana Jones for for many more folks at that time. As we progressed, than he necessarily was, I think for han solo so i would almost put his his lucky star on the combination of the two things versus just star wars by itself yeah because he wasn't the title character of star wars that's luke uh, but he was the title character of indiana jones obviously so yeah i agree with that i think yeah that when people see him they think indiana elevated. jones first right right i, exactly. I agree with you Risman. I, I really do so uh this is kind of funny that you just say that man i'm transparently white oh um, you're, the bus. You're, driving, you're, you're you're in your um, indiana jones jacket i'm wearing my indiana jones jacket i wore it to school and not 
I got probably 35 compliments on my jacket. Not one person in the entire building all day long said, hey, that's an Indiana Jones jacket. Not one. Well, somebody said John Williams became even more famous. Look, John Williams, man, that guy was a legend before all of this stuff, man. That guy is amazing. Yep. So uh, I don't know, man. Uh, Good conversation there, guys. Uh, I see the chat has been weighing in. Um, You know, uh, it's interesting. Prototopic sent in a dollar ninety nine super chat. Mangold gaslit and trashed the fans. Bad news. Hopefully, yeah. You know, so I mean, with with entertainment today, more than likely, if that's who he is, then we'll see something like that again. It'll pop up. Hopefully, again. he learned a lesson in doing that. Well, they shut him up and again. took him off, right? He after all, at least he didn't continue. Right. He didn't double down and continue. I mean, somebody shut him up. I want to say I can remember him going back and forth with Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. Oh, he did. I remember this. Yep. Yep. And then someone like I could picture them like someone came to him, you know, I would like the old someone gets a cane and drags him off the stage. It's like, please stop typing. (laughs) Stop typing right now. (laughs) Bad enough. This movie is bad enough. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Debbie Young. Hey, Debbie. 499 Super Chat, this is all well and good, but how long will it be before the Wicked Witch of Star Wars, KK, fires him for not being female enough? Oh, boy. Well, oh no. since you brought that up, <laughs> that's kind of where we're headed a little bit. So, uh, perfect segue there to, uh, to our next topic of conversation. A little Star Wars update. Daisy Ridley has been... Uh, interviewed again lately there's still no script ladies and gentlemen waiting there's waiting she's waiting on the script yep uh but she made some well i I would say interesting comment but hey look here's the thing here's the thing okay i like daisy ridley fine i can't stand ray skywalker Hmm. i have no come on ray palpatine coach get it right man well yeah i i missed the air quotes but uh you know Obviously, that character doesn't interest me in Star Wars. It's not that I wish ill on her. And if people, you know, the dozens of people out there that like this stuff, you know, I'm glad for them. Uh, So, but here's her comment, talking about her returning to Star Wars. I suppose I feel more like I'm owning it now. I suppose I owned it the first time. Basically, I'm an adult now. I certainly did not feel like an adult at the time. Obviously, personally, things have changed and professionally. I've had lots of other experiences, and so I definitely feel like it's a different thing this time. Even after three films and a considerable amount of online discourse, Ridley still holds real affection for the world of Star Wars. She says, there's just a lot of joy with me and these films. Honestly, if I wasn't excited, I wouldn't have done it. It feels like a great thing to be part of. She really didn't say anything right there. Uh, Hey, I had never been in Star Wars before, so it was all new to me. But now I'm back, and now it's not new to me. That's basically what, and I'm excited about it because I have a job. That's basically what I hear her saying. Agree or disagree. And she's grown as an actress, right? I I don't, which is weird. Yeah. Which is weird to me, right? Was she, was she meaning to imply that she don't, doesn't feel like she did a great job in the role initially because she was a young actress? I, there was a part of that commentary where I'm like, is she indicting herself? I mean, all of us gain experiences and hopefully, hopefully, you know, are much better in our professions now than we were five or six years ago. I, I just didn't really follow exactly yeah. even what the point was of what she was trying to say yeah it sounded like she's just saying i feel more comfortable in my own exactly. skin i guess as an actress versus when i did i mean she was what 22 probably or whatever when she yeah. was shooting the force awakens so she probably did feel comfortable you know fresh out of acting school or i don't know what you know but i mean just like a young kid just you know and now she's thrown into a star wars movie there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of hype. There's a lot of, you know, and she probably didn't feel comfortable. I That's how I take that comment. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, she's she's the only one that is ready. All right. She says, I'm ready. She's the only one that's ready because there's no script. I don't think this director is ready. I don't think the fans care. I mean, so Daisy's excited about it, but she might be the only person on the planet that cares about this thing or her and Kathleen, of course. I don't even think there's anybody writing the thing right now. I, I think yeah. the problem is whoever's writing it has just been doing anything else besides that's the Peaky finishing. Blinders guy, right? Yeah. 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 Before yeah. finishing don't care. this script. So I, I, I'm going to bring in my partner here at the channel now. Hey, thanks for showing up to your channel. Uh oh, mute. I think you're, you're mute. There we go. Uh, the streak continues. Um, the streak continues. Hey, you're still muted. Yeah. No, he's not. No, don't do that to him. Don't do that to him. <laughs> I'll keep yeah, I, I, I can see the little light that I'm not. Uh, <laughs> it, yeah, it, I, I had, I had to. I was completely out of dog food. My dog didn't eat yesterday. I tried fixing the dog some eggs. Dude, we're lo losing subscribers. Like you're, you're starving <laughs> your dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we had to record Man. that uh, X Men episode. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, so here, Nick, I'm just going to throw you right into the fire here. So Daisy Ridley, her most recent comments, here's what she followed up that statement with, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, it wasn't a difficult decision. I didn't say yes right away. Kathy was like, take as long as you need. Not that it took that long to say yes. Why wouldn't I do it? And then she says this. Yes, they have been divisive, but also they bring a lot of love and joy to a lot of people. It feels pretty amazing to be able to continue a character like, can I even remember how to play her? It's an interesting challenge as an actor to come back to something and try to figure out what's changed for me and what's changed for her. All in a day's work for a Jedi. That's what Empire says. She recognizes the fact, again, Daisy's done this a multitude of times where she's the one that brings up the divisiveness. She's one of the only ones that will. If you guys have never noticed that there aren't a whole lot of people involved with Disney in any way that brings up the divisiveness. The, uh, there's a multitude of fans that aren't buying this, that don't like it. And, and I think that's kind of might be what she's talking about here, Nick, because she said, I didn't know what I was getting into the first time. Now I do. She didn't know the train wreck that was coming. So now she wants to sign up to be involved in another train wreck. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, count me out. That's what I would have said. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I don't see her getting a whole lot of other work. So, and, you know, I, I mean, money talks. And if you, if yep. you don't have anything else going on, then uh, I mean, uh, I would uh, play Ray Skywalker that. tomorrow. Yo, uh, what did uh, Winston say in uh, Ghostbusters is there's a steady paycheck in it. <laughs> I believe anything you say. That's pretty much what <laughs> yeah. we got going exactly. on right here. You know, it's exactly. money. Oh, money talks, baby. Yeah, let me yeah. go ahead and get it in. But, yeah, but, I, I don't think she's I don't think she's 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 saying what she needs to say. Right. She's saying what she needs to say because, you know, she's getting an opportunity. We're going at back to this character we're going to resurrect your character and dust her off the mop dust off you know the mothballs and put her back out there and it's like okay i gotta embrace this thing so she's going to speak mm -hmm. positively but yeah the fact is that she does recognize it's divisive she un she understands that she's not stupid so she knows that mm -hmm. I, I mean you kind of mm -hmm. want to root for daisy ridley i just don't like the character you know i do not like yeah. the character of ray I, I would love for her to be involved in star wars in some other fashion It'd be awesome to see her play a different character, but I mean, obviously, that's not possible. Yeah, so I don't think anybody's interested in this. I, I don't, you know, I don't. The, know. the only thing I think she got wrong in that statement was that uh, those movies bring a lot of love uh, and joy because uh, there's not a lot. I wouldn't say a lot. Uh, I think she could have reworded that to there. There's a mm. few people that like it. <laughs> I, I don't know. She she almost sounded like she was trying to convince herself again. In that interview, because she said, well, I didn't say yes right away, but why wouldn't I have said yes right away? And then I said yes right away. And I'm like, did you say <laughs> yes right away or not? Yeah. Right? Who, who are you trying to convince that this is a good idea? Because the rest of us think right. it's not. <laughs> it's like, I don't know who That's you're real. trying to convince. That's real. So, you know, it's a fascinating question that we'll never know the answer to. 
how many how many people out there love the Disney sequel trilogy like we love George Lucas Star Wars? How many people out there that love it like that? I don't know. I know there are some. I see them on Twitter, and they usually have pronouns in their bios. Yeah. Or, or they deliver presents on Christmas Eve, right? We know. We know one person who really loves the sequels. Star Wars Santa loves the sequels. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, he's our go-to. I love that man. He's one of the best men in the space. You know, and he has come on here and shared with us his personal reasons mm -hmm. why he likes the sequels. I understand those reasons, and I respect Star Wars Santa. Mm. At least he could tell me why. Yeah. Yeah. You Very know, eloquently. He, he made it personal for him. I get that. Hey, it's okay to like something that most people don't like. I, I don't I don't follow the masses based on you know, I, I, I don't look at something and measure how much I like it based on anybody else's opinion. It's mine. You know what I mean? If you want to like something ugly, that's up to you. That's yeah. totally your call. Uh, so I, I respect that. Um, but I just, man, I don't look with each show, the numbers go down. We say it every week. Yeah. Yep. And, and when the acolyte comes, <laughs> man, like, and, and here's oh. the thing, the acolyte's going to be a kind of a, uh, poof, instant transmission. He's gone. He Force said ghost. Right he said, I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but. Golly, I, I lost my train of thought. All right, well, the anyways. Acolyte, the Acolyte. Uh, you were start, you were yeah, talking so about the look, acolyte. there's going to be a whole lot of people talking about the Acolyte when it first drops. Because most people, in my opinion, think a crash is about to happen. And they want to oh, yeah. see it. They want to see it. You know, I, I, if, if you're not a supporter of Disney Star Wars, then don't watch it on Disney+. Plus. Uh, Coach, I have to tell you, the the Empire, the, the actual six-page Empire article came out today about the Acolyte. I read it. It told us absolutely nothing else. I, I it, it amazed me. Six-page article. Of stuff you already knew. And, and, and a one comment from her saying, oh, I've said too much. I shouldn't talk about that. Which they obviously <laughs> cut it out. Whatever she, whatever she said too much of, they obviously cut that damn thing out. Because I'm like, you told me nothing here more in six pages that I didn't already know. Dumb. Just so dumb. Well, so that's, that's like Jedi mind trick. That's persuasion. That's trying to pull the wool over your eyes it's trying to speak something into existence let's speak yeah. this acolyte hype into existence let's talk it into existence i've been talking about this this is the one thing that all of these um big franchises they cannot they, what they can't do is they can't they can try their best with the shill media with all the bots that they have out there on twitter hyping up some oh my god i can't wait for the acolyte to come out like they push all of that stuff out there but real fans are like you can't fool us <laughs> okay maybe that would have worked 10 years ago you know the shill media and the bots on twitter are pumping something up and then we all fall up for it hook line and sinker but eventually you're gonna actually have to make something good because the people have checked out and so all this stuff that they've got, I saw that, I, I saw the Empire article the same. I didn't read it, but I was like, I, I'm not buying anything that they got in this thing, okay? I don't care what you say in this article. I've seen the track work of Kathleen Kennedy with my own two eyes. I'm not buying it. I don't believe that you guys know what you're doing. I don't have any confidence in it. Now, I'll walk in with an open mind. I will. But getting me hyped and excited? No, no, sir. No, sir. I don't believe it, you know? So, yeah, all yeah. of the... All the shills and all the bots and everything that they got trying to promote and pump up stuff, the fans are hip to the game, okay? We are hip to it now. You guys can no longer fool us and make us think that your trash is gold, all right? You can't do it anymore. We're done. Yep. You know, I I started the Fallout series today on Prime. Watched the first two episodes. I don't know anything about Fallout the game, but I loved um, Nolan and Lisa Joy, right? The Westworld folks, and, and these they, they know how to do TV. Mm -hmm. The premiere episode was over an hour. The second episode was about an hour. It's beautifully produced. 
right? The special effects look good. I'm like, here we are, one more series on Amazon Prime that looks better than anything we've gotten on Disney Plus, and I still just don't understand. So you're saying you're enjoying the show? Yeah, but I don't know anything about it, right? So I'm piecing it all together just based upon what I'm seeing on the screen. Uh, I'm just a, I'm just a fan of the creators, right? And right. No wonder they've never done Star Wars. They've, they're doing too many other things that they're that they're enjoying. They don't want a black mark on their resume. <laughs> no, right. Well, so, they? so yeah. I mean, for what I've seen so far, it's been it's been, been quite well done. Um, I just hour long episode. You said the premiere was over an hour because it kept not a going. Half hour, not a little half hour episode no. with <laughs> it kept going, and I'm like, I ten paused minutes it. of credits. <laughs> I paused it. I'm like, how long is this thing? An hour and fifteen minutes. That's awesome. I, but see, I, again, the, they understand, you know, what the fans wanted. Like Acolyte, we're going to get a bunch of 35 minute or 30 minute episodes. You know, that's what we're beginning with the Acolyte. You know, it's they don't know what they're doing, man. It's, it's, it's sad to see Star Wars sitting behind all of these other great franchises right now. It's just crazy. Yep, I, I agree. Well, speaking of a little bit more Star Wars. This came oh, yeah. out. Oh, boy. <laughs> so... Uh, the story trailer for Star Wars Outlaws. Now, let's, uh, I'm going to pause it when we see our friend here. Let me uh, pause it real quick Be- there. For before, the before you go on, Coach, pause it for just a second. Sure. W- was I the only one who was confused by this trailer? I had to watch the developer breakdown and figure out what in the heck was going on here. Right. I, I no, you're not the only one that's confused because I didn't watch that video that you're talking about. So I still don't really know like what we're what we're doing. It's right. it's a girl who was originally, if I'm not mistaken, Han Solo. And they replaced her character. They replaced Han Solo with this girl. I they would have had to change the whole story then, because now that I understand the story, Han Solo wouldn't have fit in her place. That may be, yeah, maybe what maybe I'm just totally wrong about that. But I've seen that in multiple places. That the original pitch for the game was it was going to be centered around Solo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard you say. So they may have then they would have had to really completely change it, right? Because we see him in Carbonite here. I mean, there, that would have yeah. been a whole different game than whatever. Oh was. yeah, yeah. It wasn't like a, they made the game and then they boop they changed the main character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. No, now. no, no. Yeah. yeah. Um, but. Yeah, I have no idea. But look, some of the visuals, like looking at the Empire stuff here, yeah, that looks good and everything. Uh, But isn't it interesting? And look, I mean, golly, guys, the the Stormtroopers looked great right there, you know, with the cinematic. But uh, yeah. (laughs) So Opinions? You know, I see this girl, Kay Viss, and everybody seems to be trashing this on Twitter. I joined in as well and was just like, ugh, like another, and and we already knew. I, I was basically speaking in jest. I said, another female lead. You know, and when I say that, you know, I get the typical uh, responses to that. Another female lead, and then immediately by the people who claim to love the sequel trilogy, it's those same people, they are calling me a misogynist. I'm a sexist. I'm all of these things. When all I said was another female lead, that that's it. Like, what if it was another white man? And if I said another white man, even if I said it like it, as a complaint, another white man, would that mean I'm racist? Though I happen nope. to be one. Like, it, it's just crazy. But what is up with Star Wars? This game, the Nick did a great video on it. The model is 
gorgeous, and they made that model look like this in yeah. the game. And I guess it's because the report from the previous week, like it said, you know, beautiful women in video games are making real women want to commit suicide, which is the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever heard in my life. Ever heard, man. But people are actually saying that. Yeah. And and what's even sadder for me is I remember back the last time they were hyping this game up, they did a behind the scenes with this actress and she was in the motion capture suit and she was rolling around and doing all that stuff. She's a huge fan. She's a huge Star Wars fan. And she was like, this is I dream come true to, to play this role and to be able to, to, to go into this universe and do all this stuff. She, she Not only is she a does she look beautiful, she just seemed to have a beautiful spirit. And so I don't, I understand that's not necessarily the point of the game, but to me, they I think they could have done a better job representing the likeness of the actress. Yeah, I agree. And they showed that one, um, uh, that one, uh, God, I can't remember the, the actor's name that plays um, uh, Cal, Kestis. Cal Kestis. What's his yeah. name? Cameron, oh, Cameron Monaghan. Cameron, yeah, Mon Cameron Mon Monaghan. Yeah, they showed the side by side of those two guys. And it's like there's like twins. It's Identical. like spitting image. Yeah. But then with this actress to this character, it's like you guys clearly had something going on. You, I, I, I don't know why they would do that. I, I mean, if I was this actress, I'd be pissed. It's like, this is how you represented me. I was so excited to be in the game, and this is how you represent me. None of my friends would ever recognize that I'm in this game, you know, based on this mm -hmm. character that you created. So, yeah, I, I would have been upset off of that just, just, just for that Why long. did they – look – it is what it is. They ugly fight her. Yeah, why, they did. Why are they doing that in Star Wars in a Star Wars game? And and, and for the record, because it's you for know, the modern audiences and for modern people that can relate to not being pretty. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> true, true or false? You are okay with a female lead in a video game? Just everybody. True or false? So I'm, I played I, Tomb Raider. I'm yeah. So did I. And I'm at least. And I'm at least two. There was and at least two reasons to play Tomb Raider. I played Metroid. <laughs> a lot of people don't know Metroid's a female character. Yeah, no uh, problem. And, and I'm going to be playing Stellar Blade. Uh, I'm, I'm getting Stellar Blade, too. I'm going to be playing Stellar. that. Yeah, no problem. Mysteries of the Sith, main character, Mara Jade. Oh, yeah. One yep. of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that that isn't quite the issue when you just simply say, female lead well because coach you're pointing out the agenda that's why they are upset because yeah. you're pointing out the obvious agenda and they you got know, somebody had the got at me about <laughs> oh it's look at all the male uh characters that have been in star wars you know from the very beginning i said okay but look at how many female characters have been in disney star wars out of the five movies that we've had four of them have a female lead you have ahsoka is a female lead. You got this video game now with female lead. They had the females take over the Mandalorian. You know, they ended up Bo-Katan is like the most important character in Star Wars in, in the Mandalorian series. You know, like all of these. And again, I don't have a problem with a female lead. Sure. But it seems like the agenda is afoot. That's the problem. Can we just write good stories with good characters and not worry so much about the agenda. And when you point out the fact that there's an agenda, people get butt hurt. But it's like, yo, it's an agenda. I'm sorry if you don't want to admit it. You know, Kathleen Kennedy admits there's an agenda. She said it. So if Kathleen Kennedy is saying there's an agenda, damn it, there's an agenda. Can we just all agree that, yes, Star Wars is pushing an agenda, you know, with female representation being at the top of it? Yeah. Can we just all agree to that well, and, and then call them out and here's, for it? And here's what they're going to say. They're going to say... The proponents of it are going to say, well, yeah, they're trying to make Star Wars available and for everybody. They're trying to for everybody already. <laughs> well, and, and remember on, on Mando season three, you know who was the most surprised that season three was going to be female led? Katie Sackhoff, her own self. Yeah. She, mm -hmm. they, she's like, she's like, remember her comment? She's like, I got the script and it was all me. She's like, where's the Mandal? She's like, I, I, somehow, she was basically like, I think she even said it on her podcast. She's like, somehow it became my show. Right. It's like, this so, is right. So I made this tweet a couple days ago 
and it just stirred up a hornet's nest. <laughs> uh, it says the force is still female when they announced yeah. the tales of the empire. Now, for the record, I am interested in in Barisophie's arc. I have no interest in Morgan Elsbeth. I might watch it, maybe, maybe, but I'm I'm not interested in it at all right now. Uh, but there you go. And I said the force is still female. End of sentence. That's all that I said. And you know, the question is, how are you not a misogynist? How are you not a sexist? And I'm like, how, how does that mean that I am one? Because every single project seems to be agenda, agenda, agenda. I have no problem. Somebody posted on Twitter today. They said, if, if, uh, my gosh, dude. It was a female character. Maybe it was like... It was Ripley. Daisy. You're talking about Ripley. No, well, she was the counterpoint. It, oh. Who who was it they, that they were saying, if it wasn't this character and if it was Sigourney Weaver? Yeah, yeah, Ripley. Sigourney Weaver as Ripley. Yeah, Sigourney Weaver as Ripley. Yeah, yeah, yeah who was the post. character that she was replacing? That's what I'm trying to remember. I remember it was Ripley. Well, I think the, the one I saw was like if it was if this character, the King the Vest character from the video game. Okay, all right. Yeah, 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 that was the comparison point. All right, so the character in the game, they were like, if it if this was Sigourney Weaver from Alien, they'd still hate it. And I'm like, no. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Like, uh, but DA got yeah. into some good statistics there. Um, since the you know, uh, Star Wars debacle happens with this whole Star Wars Outlaws thing. And people who are saying the Force is still female, you get called all the stuff. I just do it for them now. When they start attacking me, I'm like, yes, misogynist, incel, bigot, basement dweller, racist. I'm all of those things. Did I miss anything? I, there, I, <laughs> there, I did it for you. Like, I literally say that on Twitter. Um, since the Disney purchase, the first season of Clone Wars, since that purchase in 2012, was season five. So we had seasons five through seven. Okay? Seasons five through seven. Now, I want you guys to think about this. There are seven seasons of Clone Wars. What character do you think has the most screen time overall. Mm. Who was the main characters in the very beginning? Well, Anakin and Obi-Wan. It's Anakin and Obi-Wan. Yeah. Anakin and Obi-Wan. <clears throat> when was Ahsoka's first appearance? It was... Clone Wars? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, the movie, but like, right? But like when... Uh, was she there from the beginning? Season one, episode nine. And she was introduced as a Padawan. And she was introduced as a side character. Mm -hmm. Side character. Additional character. Supporting character. Not main character. So any any guesses on uh, screen time for the Clone Wars after after its finale? What mm. character do you think had the most screen time? I, I, I feel like the answer is going to be Ahsoka. Yeah. Because she was in the I'm movie, kinda, too, wasn't she? I'm kind of setting it up there. Yeah. Ahsoka, seven hours, 51 minutes, next to Anakin, seven Terrible. hours, 50 minutes. Yeah. Obi-Wan, five hours and 20 minutes. Mm. So Clone Wars, you could argue, especially if you look at season seven, became about Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 100%. It, it, did. it yeah. transformed itself, no pun intended, into the Ahsoka show. Not what it originally was. You know, the main character changed, at least. Uh, so we've got that. Um, 
Let's see. The Bad Batch. What is that show about? Omega. <laughs> Obviously, it's about Omega, man. It's not about the Bad Batch at all. <laughs> yeah. It's not even about the clone. It's not even about what happened to the clones anymore. Nope. Nope. Not at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think nobody here will argue that the Bad Batch very quickly became a series centered around Omega, who happens to be a young female character. Okay. Yep. So you got the sequel trilogy. Yep. You've got what they did to the Clone Wars. You've got what they've done to the Bad Batch. Yep. Season one of Visions was okay. Star Wars anime. It was okay. Listen to the names of the episodes of these. And I might, instead of the name of the episode, I might read you the synopsis. Lola, a former Sith, has built a new scene. Serene life for herself away from the dark side of the Force. Next episode. A young girl seeking relief from her days in a rural workshop discovers a legendary haunted cave. Next episode. Two sisters, who were the last of their kind, that fight for survival. Next episode. Young pilot Annie is forced to participate with her caring but nagging mother. We're talking about Star Wars. Over and over and over. Risman, you look like you want to puke. <laughs> I, because you just, you just reminded me in a roundabout way that half of Tales of the Jedi was about Ahsoka too, right? I mean, yep. <laughs> talking about exactly Ahsoka one half. Time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And no, the now, first episode was her, her, uh, baby Ahsoka. Story. Yeah. But see, let's flip that coin around. All right. Half of Tales of the Jedi was about Dooku. Now, mm -hmm. if you take season two into consideration, you could say one fourth of it is about a male. Yeah. We saw what they did with Obi Wan. Okay, Obi Wan became the Reva show. It became the Leia show. It's not about Obi Wan it, 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 yeah. hardly at all. You know, it's like everything that they're doing. Again, I, I go right back to this Kathleen Kennedy interview. I play it all the time on videos where I talk about this stuff. Kathleen Kennedy bragged, bragged that you know six out of the eight story group members are women. Yes. You know, 50 percent of the executives at Lucasfilm are women. I mean, she comes out and she states it. She's very bold and brash about it. She has no problem saying that the force is female. She put it on a shirt. OK, so, I mean, at this point in time, we just got to accept it. This is what it is. I don't know why people argue against it now at this point. OK, well, I have no idea why people want to argue this point. Not, not to pile on, but in the book of Boba Fett, Fennec Shand very clearly occupied the role we would have expected Boba Fett to occupy. Yeah. She was kicking yeah. ass, taking names, telling them what to do, telling them what not to do, yeah. sending them into she the was in charge after droids. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yep. Yeah, I mean, she, she literally just told him what to do. She oh, yeah. was, in the very beginning, a sniper watching his back, taking people out. I like Fennec Shand, by the oh, way. Oh, I do too. Uh, and, and here's the thing, too. As misogynistic as I'm called, I would be fully supportive of her getting her own show, and especially mm. Bo Katan's, uh, you know, you, you, Ka you mean Katie getting, Sackhoff. You mean her getting a second show, right? Because she already had Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, you know, I enjoy her yeah. character. You know, that would be fine with me. The issue is not, you know, there's a female lead. The issue is female lead, female lead, female lead, female lead, female lead, agenda, the force is female. Look what Kathleen Kennedy has been telling us she's doing this for years. Yeah. She said it before The Force Awakens came out. She said it before it came out. She was very clear about what her agenda was. And she was so happy that Disney supported the agenda. I mean, it's like, I don't know why people just deny it. At this point, it's like, guys, look. We can make videos. We can show all the evidence and the receipts. And they're still not going to look. Ah, oh, you guys are just a bunch of incels. It's like, all right, whatever. I'm an incel then. I'm a toxic male baby. Go ahead. That's fine. But the truth is, 
is that this is what this chick has been saying this entire time about Star Wars. She planned on turning it into a female centric franchise and she's done it. She's absolutely done it. Now, whether you like that, whether you don't like it, whether you think that's good, bad or whatever, it doesn't take away from the fact that that's what this chick did. All right. Star Wars. I, I, I put the video out there where George Lucas says Star Wars was written for 12 year old boys. That's Wonderful. what we have for, in mind when it came to this series. All right. That's the whole reason Disney bought Star Wars or Lucasfilm to make Star Wars content is because, hey, we're all about the princesses. We're all about dress up and fairies and all that kind of stuff. We don't have content for boys. So then they go and buy Star Wars. They go and buy Marvel. And then they proceed to turn them into girl franchises. It's the stupidest thing ever. They've lost tons and tons and tons of money. I don't understand it. I don't know why this has happened. But, you know, here we are. And, and people will still deny it. Even with this whack video game that's about to come out that nobody's going to buy and nobody's going to play, they're still going to deny, ah, oh, no, you guys are just a bunch of misogynists. Like, all right, cool. All right. <laughs> but I'm right. Exactly. Okay. I might be a misogynist, but I'm right. Okay. This is we exactly don't... what they've done to the franchise. There are people out there that want this, like these people at Inverse. Women's stories are more prominent than ever in Star Wars, The Last Jedi. Let's be honest. The women steal the show. <laughs> This article is almost seven years old. Mm. That's what we were reading then. Mm -hmm. you, she's a nice lady. What on earth was that? <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't me. <laughs> that was Nick. Nick snuck that in. <laughs> hey, she's a nice lady. Oh man. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just it's just absolutely yeah. Crazy. So, and now the acolyte is about to be another show that's for focused on I the female. Just about to say the the lead antagonist and who we assume to be okay. the lead protagonist and who we assume to be the lead. Oh, there's no doubt. It's it's going to be both, Stenberg, Amanda Stenberg. Are both female? Yeah, yeah. So, all right. If you think about every Star Wars film ever made, including including Rogue One and Solo. What Star Wars character do you think has the most screen time? Now you're wow. mixing you're mixing both George Lucas and Sequel and, trilogy. and Disney. Yep. Uh, mm. I'm gonna say either R2 or C3PO. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go with Anakin as Vader as well. Okay. You across all across every movie who has all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would have probably picked R2. All right. So R2, we got to do stuff like this more often because this is fun. Um, I can tell you that R2 is not even in the top ten. Wow. Mm. You're talking screen time, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think he would be. Yeah, I think it would be. It has to be Anakin. He's in every. He's in the C three PO is he, number ten. Well, I, I think though know, it, it depends. They probably. I don't know who's doing the counting, but are they counting Anakin as Vader? Or are they only counting Anakin? Anakin, as Anakin, Anakin, Vader, same person. Okay. Yeah. So Anakin Vader is number one, coming in at two hours and forty four minutes across four films. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Okay. Han Solo is coming in second with two hours and eighteen minutes. He got his own movie. That's true. Mm -hmm. okay. It was still Han Solo, even though it wasn't. It him. was yeah. still Han Solo. Yep. I get it. All right. Luke Skywalker comes in at two hours and thirteen minutes. Hmm. Three films. That's it. Well, he's he also in, in the Last Jedi. He was in more than three films. He oh just, yeah. You just choose to forget those other. God damn, I <laughs> that thing. Man, I blocked that thing yeah. out. It was Luke adjacent. It was Luke adjacent. All right. Four minutes less than Luke Skywalker coming in at two hours and nine minutes. Ray. Mm -hmm. Wow. After her movie. Ray Palpatine Skywalker will have more screen time than any character in the history of Star Wars. Yep. By mm. far. Oh, yeah. It won't even be close. 
<laughs> you heard it here fo first, folks. Comments? I'm actually kind of surprised by that a little bit, but at the same time, not surprised. Uh, you know, once I actually think about it and basically who's in charge of Star Wars now. Uh, so, yeah, after this Ray movie comes out, I mean, she's going to pass. She'll pass Luke in the first 10 minutes of the film. <laughs> yeah. She'll have Luke passed in five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes wow. of screen time, she passes Luke. And 10 minutes of screen time, she passes Han. Yep. And by and, and like Nick said, a third of the way through the movie, she's the all-time leader of screen time. This is who Star Wars is now about. Yep. Well, Disney Star Wars. You got to remember to add that little caveat to it. It's Disney Star Wars. And guess what? In the words Oh, of you don't Newt have to sell me on that. I... <laughs> <laughs> and in the words of Newt from Aliens, it won't make any difference. Okay? It's not going to make one bit of difference how much they shove Ray into this film or into Star Wars. It's not going to hit like it used to. This character is boring. This character is dull. People don't like this character. And you can try to force feed her all you want to. Okay? Use the force. The, the female, I call it a forced female. So the force is female, the forced female. They are shoving this chick down our throats. Nobody likes this character. I mean, few people do, obviously. But most people don't like this character. Most people are like, this character is boring and dull. That's why the box office went from, what, $2 billion to $1 billion over the course of, you know, two, two films or whatever. Nobody cares. So, yeah, they can do this all they want to. It's not going to matter. <laughs> okay, people are still not I, going to see the movie. I just have to say again for the record, if the Ray movie comes out, it ain't yeah. coming out until 2027. Mm -hmm. By then, it's eight years after... Right after 2019, it wasn't 2019 yep. it was Rise of Palpatine. Yep. Right, yep. so by that point, it becomes eight years. If people don't care now, if most people don't care now, they're sure as hell not going to care in 2020 freaking seven. They're not. They're not. I I give it less and less chance of coming out ever. I think and the you one know what, thing the Mandalorian do... season three really needed to be good. It really yes was. yes yes. I said this back then, too. I said the same thing, Coach. That series had to be good. And then when that series bombed, I said, man, Ahsoka has to be amazing. Exactly. All right? Ahsoka better be the best thing they've ever done. And it was the furthest thing from that. So, yeah, they've lost all interest in Star Wars. After Ahsoka bombed, that was it. That was their last chance gas on the runway or the, on the on the road to success. That was their last chance gas, and they missed it. So, yeah, I don't think there's any chance in the world that uh, – um, uh, this Ray movie. I don't, I, I'm with you, Risman. I don't think it'll, it'll get made. If it does get made, I don't think Charmaine Obey Chinoy is making it. I think she'll get pulled, you know, and they'll try to find another director that maybe can hype, you know, get some hype going around it. Uh, but yeah, Ray is not going to get it done. She's, she's not, not going to, she's not going to wait, right? If it coming, the reason why Daisy doesn't have a script yet is if it's not coming out into 2027, they don't need a freaking script now. It, it doesn't, yeah. the whole thing makes no sense sense and not no one obey Shinoi, no one's waiting gonna wait around for this thing and it's just gonna get quietly put on the shelf like so many other things do and we'll move on to the next nothing burger yep so so let me ask you guys a question and this is gonna this is gonna make some people in the chat mad but uh, guys i you know you, if you are not new here <laughs> then you know <laughs> we're going to shoot you straight i mean you may disagree, but you know what I think. How many of you thought when you went and watched The Phantom Menace that that felt like Star Wars? The first time, 99. 1999, you went and watched The Phantom Menace. You walked out of the theater going, dang, that was a Star Wars movie. And, and if you did, that's okay. If you did, that's I'm okay. trying to remember. I don't think I felt like I don't think I felt that way. I think I felt like they were doing something new. They were doing something different. They were trying to, you know, go in a different direction. I had to watch it. My, my first time walking out of the theater, I, I, I was I was pleased, but I wasn't like satisfied. Right. Like, OK, 
this is going somewhere I need more. You know, it, it felt like an incomplete story and I had to go back and watch it a few times, you know, to like kind of get the gist of it, you know. But yeah, the first time walking out, I was so happy to have Star Wars back. I didn't really care. You know, I was like, yeah, Star Wars is back and we had a nice lightsaber battle to kind of finish this thing off. And I mean, it was great. But overall, like, you know, I was like, eh, this, I'm, I'm feeling a little incomplete here. You know, I don't feel like this thing got across the finish line like i wanted it to i i agree what for me when it got to duel the fates i was like oh they turned star wars on i'm watching yeah, star wars now. right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, i just want to break in here now. real quick uh and michael thank you for being here michael uh he says saw the thumbnail killing uh it's it's dead already and and look i totally get that totally i have said star wars is dead that that means when I say it though that it's dead to me, uh, but it's not dead if it's still breathing. And as long as they still have new shows coming out, it's still breathing. They might be terrible, they might be awful, they might be straight garbage trash, but it ain't dead because they're still making it. Dead is no life left, yeah. <laughs> like you know. So, uh, man. Um, the, the 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 Disney Star Wars shills are basically keeping it on life support. Oh, That's I agree. Basically, where Star Wars is, it's on life support. Look, and and if they don't change it, we won't even have any new Star Wars books. Not that I care. No, nah. there won't even be books being written because the franchise will be so dead. No one will touch it. Uh so th they better get it fixed. That the acolyte better come out soon, guys, or it's well, over. <laughs> well, don't worry. Don't worry. Listen, we still have skeleton crew will save us at the end of the oh, year. My don't God. forget yeah. about skeleton. <laughs> don't you forget about skeleton crew, Coach? We're yeah. gonna have the we're gonna have the lost kids in space. The Goonies are gonna be there. They're on these bikes. Is gonna be show, happening. Whole thing. Honestly, if they play that show right, they could have a lot of fun with it. I don't think it's gonna be a great show, but. They just need to go all out and just have a good time and just have some fun, all right? Because I, I don't think I, as a Star Wars fan, have had fun. In a, I, don't, I can't remember the last show. That I'm like, man, this is a lot of fun. I'm, I'm having a good time. I can't wait till the next episode comes out. I haven't yeah. been feeling like that. You all know, right, the so, last movie was seven years ago or whatever. All right, you know? so what you're yeah. saying is along my point. When I went and watched the original trilogy as a kid all my life, even if I go in there and watch it tonight, it's fun. Still right. fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When and I'm not saying this, you don't have, nobody has to agree with me. I'm just telling you how I felt. I went and watched The Phantom Menace and I loved it the first time I saw it with Nick in nineteen ninety nine. You know why? The only reason why is because I got to see Star Wars in the theater. Mm, right. That was that was why. But then we went and watched it the next day. And when we left, we were like I was like I think I think I like it. But I didn't know. <laughs> Something was off. Not usually a good sign. And then the third time we we, we watched it again. Twice the second day. Yeah. Now I know I don't like it. Yep. Like, it doesn't feel like Star Wars to me. There's some pieces that do. That Duel of the Fates is badass, son. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. But Anakin in the ship, that's a neat trick. Yeah, let's try The little thing yeah, farting, man. Jar Jar Binks, Metachlorians, yeah. it was so Trade goofy. Federation... Yeah. I'm yeah. just like, nah, dog. This doesn't feel nah. Yeah. It was like it was a comedy. Like a and Star I was Wars like, comedy. What a miss to do the prequels when we should be getting an episode seven. Yeah. Yep. What a miss. And then I went and watched Attack of the Clones. And for me personally, I like Attack. I Attack like of the better. Clones was much better than The Phantom Menace. Oh man, I think it's the worst one. <laughs> But it still had... I thought it was the worst. It was still different. Revenge of the Fifth, Sith felt like Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, I agree it, with it, that. It, it did. For the most part, it did. Um, so I guess when I'm looking at all this feminist stuff, all this agenda stuff, it 
it really comes down to at the bare bones of it all is what they're doing. Does it feel like Star Wars to me? And if it doesn't, why is that? You know, and that's something that I kind of have to just work through myself. Did you think Andor felt like Star Wars? No, I didn't either. Okay. No, and I've and I've said this. Um, you know, uh, I like Andor fine, mm-hmm. but if Andor was not a Star Wars show and was something else with the same story, I'd probably love it. Yeah. But first Star Wars, you know, and and I and I get the criticism, the Disney, the Disney supporters say it all the time. You just need lightsabers and pew pew. But well, yeah. I do. It's Star Wars. Yeah. Nick. No, I'm in complete agreement. Uh I, again, and or as far as like as far as like the writing and the serious tone of it, it wasn't as goofy and silly and all that. I liked that aspect of it, but then it was just missing that Star Wars lightheartedness and charm, and it took itself a little too seriously for me. There's the AK forty seven still gun still drive me nuts to this day. It just didn't feel like Star Wars. Uh, but I didn't I didn't hate it like I hate the sequel trilogy or I hate no. freaking Ahsoka or Book of Boba Fett. Uh, you know, it's not like that. I, I think the closest thing we've gotten to Disney Star Wars feeling as close to Star Wars as the OG Star Wars was Rogue One. And I still had issues with Rogue One. <laughs> the uh, Mandalorian feels more like Star Wars to me than anything. Season one. Yeah, the Mandalorian would be uh the Mandalorian would would be second for me. Uh but uh yeah, the Mandalorian the fir- first and I had a lot of issues with the first two seasons of of Mando. Uh but I don't know. I just don't know if anybody they have working over there knows the right formula. I don't even think George Lucas knows the right formula and that's no. kind of shows in the prequels. Uh, George Lucas so, became a caricature of George Lucas, just like Star- Disney Star Wars yeah. has become become a caricature of Star Wars. Yep. It's not what it once was. Risman, tell us about your thoughts on, on uh, what's the name of that show again? Which one? The one that you, uh, Andor. <laughs> uh, <yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> well, the pro- I think the problem, the main problem that I have with Andor, which you know I love the show, yeah, the absolutely. main problem I have with, main problem I have with Andor is it's whimsyless. It has no whimsy. It there is, if you try and think of one super serious thing that happened in Andor, even the, the lesbians dro- making it. No, that wasn't funny. Never mind. Even his <laughs> droid was sad. Even his droid wasn't funny. Right there was zero. There was zero points of levity in the entirety of Andor and that is a turnoff. Right? As much as I as much as I like Tony Garoy's style and the way that it was written and the acting was superlative and the di- you know all the everything they did in the production and the delivery of the show was great. But it's not fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a fun watch and I think I think you fail I think you fail at the Star Wars equation if there is zero fun. And, and that's what I was talking about when I was referencing like the lightheartedness of it. You know, it just, it just didn't feel like star Wars. Mm-hmm. I love Andor by the way. And oh, I, lot, agree. Lot of people <laughs> I agree that it is not a fun show. It is a very serious show. It takes itself serious. It takes star Wars. It takes the galaxy seriously. Everything is treated with like weight. You know, this is important. The Empire, they're a real threat. They're not these clumsy, goofy stormtroopers that can't hit anything, okay? They're legitimately fearful. And I think the thing that, that's why I loved about it is that 
okay, you kind of showed me why somebody like an Andor or anybody else that's in the rebellion would want to join the rebellion. You showed that through me, especially in that prison break arc, where it's like, yo, this is what you guys are doing to people. Like, this is what the empire is doing. I was like, yo, man, man this is wild. So I was like, okay, I can see why Andor at the very last moment of that, like the last um, scene where he says, kill me or take me in, you know? Like, make me a part of this thing or just get rid of me because I ain't trying to keep going with the, what this empire is doing. So I felt that. And, you know, but yeah, is it fun? No, it's not fun at all, man. It's kind of very depressing and dark. Uh, but I, like I, I felt like this, that if Star Wars had given us enough good television and good movies in this Disney era, I think people would have been a little bit more accepting of Andor being kind of like, okay, this is kind of an offshoot that's darker and more serious if we got like some good old-fashioned adventure star wars this is what which is what we you know all got attracted to this franchise for if we got that i think we would have felt people would have felt a little bit better about andor that's how i look at yeah. it anyway i agree, no, I agree. dan and grissom's so, k2so in in is star wars i yeah. couldn't agree more i think he's the funniest character in the entire franchise you, you know why season he's two, right? c3po with sarcasm but you, yeah. you know why that is, right? He's played by a comedian, plays the guy. Yeah, right. and it's fabulous. Yep. And and so this is an interesting conundrum, right? Because Andor was originally pitched as a series with Andor and K2SO on missions, right? And I don't know if it was going to be mission of the week or if there was going to be a prevailing thread, right? But that was the original pitch that was passed by Tony Gilroy. And he was like, if you do it this way, it's not going to work. And that's this is the whole famous story, right? Because we almost got the Andor and K2SO buddy cop type show. And, and again, as much as I loved what they did with Andor, I think if they had gone that direction or introduced K2SO somehow earlier in this season, mm -hmm. we would mm -hmm. have gotten some of the levity, we, even if it was sarcastic, even if it was just yeah. offhanded. But like I said, instead we got the... We got a depressed droid who's like a dog missing his master. <laughs> Man. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're not wrong. All right, guys. We got to uh, hit these member chats and yep. super chats real quick. Uh, Felix Kiros, member for three years. Wow, three years with EBN. There were so many great memories and great live streams. I made so many friends during this time here at EBN. Thanks, Coach and Nick. We are, you are, EBN. Thank you, Felix. Help you. Can't wait to see you at Icon, brother. Yep. Um, let's see. Aurora Uplinks, member for 13 months. Story idea, following a young teen who leaves school to go to space and seeing everything through his eyes for the first time as he experiences danger. Awesome. Write it. Uh, uh, he's just described, they just described Skeleton Crew. Yeah, if you put like yeah. five of those people together, there it is. Yeah. Add pirates, because they will be there. And Jude Law in some unknown force sensitive position. <laughs> yeah. He's the teacher, but he's force yeah, sensitive. Force he's like a Jedi in, in hiding as a school teacher. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Valiant Renegade with a 1999 super chat. Nerd Thursday. Hell, Valiant Renegade. Nerd Thursday. He finally oh. followed me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get this guy to hey you gonna follow me finally follow me thanks fine man he's, he's, he's too busy like, hey, he's too I'm busy here, tweeting dude. he's yeah. too busy tweeting himself <laughs> that's true yeah that's a good point man that guy don't put the the keyboard down yeah like, don't, don't, do you give work? This, don't give this son of a bitch too much credit he's gonna be rude here and just two more chats ah, so oh, just okay. put, put it in the parking lot. <laughs> Look, I, I just got unfollowed. Watch. <laughs> Chad Admiral Thrawn, member for eight months. Disney Star Wars, an unacceptable outcome. You know, somebody said something earlier in chat. I don't remember if it was Dan Grissom or, or who it was. But somebody said, you know, we waited so many years and they finally brought our characters back and it was an abomination. That's what killed it. Yep. That, that did it. It would have been better if you just didn't bring them back at all. Yeah. You know, I'll never forget that feeling the first time seeing The Last Jedi. 
a lightsaber over the shoulder. It oh, was it was that like over? Yeah. an eight year old going to see Transformers the movie and Optimus Optimus Prime getting slaughtered on the screen and he's dead. Yeah. In nineteen eighty six. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because that was at the beginning of the movie. We're, we're in there. We're like, here we go. Uh, the Last PTSD. Jedi. Luke is back. Mm-hmm. Like, I cannot wait to see this. this you just knew awesome. Optimus Prime was about to kick some ass. Yep. Just like Luke Skywalker. And we were wrong on both counts. Yep. Boy, were we ever. At least Transformers brought Optimus back and made him Optimus again. Was it too late? Yes. Yeah. Hasbro killed Transformers. Well, guess Star Wars wasn't paying attention. I I would argue, though, Coach, that the Transformers franchise is much more alive than how am I? What am I going to say? This how am I that it's more alive than the Star Wars franchise is right? Especially now. over in Asia, overseas, Transformers is huge over there, way bigger than Star Wars. Oh yeah, you know, at least it's in a position where. It's not losing ground when Star Wars just continues to go down. Yeah. Well, yeah, when you're you know. on top, down's pretty much the only way you can go. <laughs> Which Star Wars was before uh, oh, yeah. Disney took over. But no, but yeah. how close is it to the top now? Oh, way, way. <laughs> far away. It's it's falling hard. I, I honestly can't believe we're still talking about it. Yeah. What's wrong with us? No. <laughs> we're just haters, coach. <laughs> we're just haters that's what haters we do drifters. uh brandon the anime guy member for 22 month statement hk47 would like to have a word with you meatbags menacing tone master why would you go anywhere else for a menacing droid thank you brandon i hope you took your medicine today hell brandon the anime guy <laughs> appreciate here we, you brother here we appreciate go as, pro- as promised three years <laughs> what a waste of money. <laughs> that's, a, that's a common incentive. Right Man. <laughs> I take back Where every nice be? thing I ever said about See? you. I told you. Where will we take be? it all back. Without Valiant Renegade. I could say your name right here in front of everybody, but I would never do that. <laughs> Valiant. I'm going to call you hey, Valerie. Hey, Coach, I got to roll in a little bit, man. See you, brother. Appreciate yeah. you. DA, tell everybody where they can get you. Oh, uh, Derek Anderson, the DA. Uh, check out my channel on YouTube. Just passed uh, 11,500. Uh, nice. So I'm uh, or cl- closing in on it. 11,500 subs. So thank you, everybody over here at EBN. You guys are the like wind beneath my wings. I really appreciate that. Thanks to Valiant Renegade for finally following me <laughs> on Twitter as well. Uh, but yeah, um, check me out. I got the uh, DA's office every Saturday used to be the old ebn time i took over that time slot so you guys come and check me out and i appreciate the love every single time thank you so much for bringing me on i appreciate it derek thank you great job as always appreciate you being on the team brother yep all right um a marcellus ten dollars knights of the old republic 2 the sith lords proved you could have lightsabers and pew pew combined with mature storytelling kreia is better written than any filoni and disney character combined um Who's you know, oh the from night to the that's why yeah, i don't know who kotor characters yeah. um yeah they can do things in in games and animation that i'm totally with you i'm totally there's no reason you can't have it all so Man, dark forces a jedi outcast that whole series proved you could have it all great story and there was Male characters, female characters, draw I mean, everything. And then, of course, uh, KOTOR 1 and 2, which fans love. I've never played it, but I'm sure if I did, I would I would like it just as much as everybody else. Uh, so Never I mean, played KOTOR 2. I've never played any of them. I think I played the first Knights of the Old Republic for like 30 minutes, and then I was like, Yeah, oh. I didn't, yeah. I was like, man, this game's going to take too much time. <laughs> I was Dark Forces. I just, I'm not crazy about role-playing games. Mm. Yeah, I'm so. not really either. I have an exception for Zelda. Um, Name your favorite Star Wars games without hesitation. Just start going. Tie Fighter, uh, Dark Forces, uh, uh, Jedi Outcast, Shadows uh, of the Empire, Rogue Squadron One and Two, and Three, um, X Wing Alliance. 
Super the Super Star Wars trilogy on Super yeah. Nintendo. Okay. Um, Star Wars trilogy arcade. Mm. Um, Mysteries Star of the Wars Sith, games. Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy. All the mods you could get with those games. Mm. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of Star Wars games that that I loved, and they all proved a lot of the things that you're saying there. So yeah, I need to get that uh, Tie Fighter Total Conversion working on this computer. I still have not downloaded that, but I will. I really, I hell, that might be a good one. I can solo stream here on the. I've channel. had it. I've had it on. Yeah. Uh, you know, it supports VR as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not buying another VR headset. Prince Jayzal with a twenty dollars super chat. Hell, all hell, my brothers just sending in some support. Hell to you, brother. Yep, thank you, brother. Appreciate that very much. Hope you're doing well. Maybe next time I go see Nick, we could just all go do something together. Yeah, go hang out. Because uh, so believe it or not, I'm the cool one. Yeah, oh. definitely. <laughs> So, so funny thing is I was on his lot, one of his live streams of like, uh, like a month ago and I, I went to super chat him 20 bucks and I super chatted him $299. Whoa. And, and, uh, and I, I couldn't get it refunded. So I was just like, oh, screw it. So, uh, so, so Prince Jay Zal got $299 super chat for me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so, uh, so you, I all, not... you always have the craziest crap happen to you. Oh man, yeah, it's hilarious. Mm. Hey, the force willed it, Prince Jay Zal. Yeah, yeah. And God saw it that you needed that money more than I did. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Very cool, Georgia girl, Kreya. I think I'm saying it right. I don't know. Quote of the day: It is such a quiet thing to fall, but far more terrible is to admit it. Everybody says we got to play Kotor, Nick, but I just, yeah. man, I just ain't got the time, but that's cool. I know people love it. I do know that. Coach, so, that sounds like someone ate Chinese food, and then they wrote they wrote the fortune cookie down on that. Dang. <laughs> cookie down on yeah, that. You hadn't played it either, but <laughs> no. yeah. Venger finally finished the Dune audiobook. Why did both Lich and DV Denny Villeneuve, Lynch and Denny Villeneuve films cut out Shawnee's and Paul's first son that got killed? Uh, oh, this is a long, this is a long, <laughs> this is a long story. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Uh, who knows what's going to happen with the next movie, but she could be pregnant. I mean, I don't know. Uh, we don't know yet, Venger. We don't, we don't, I don't think. So there's going to be some interesting decisions to be made with Dune Part 3, for sure. For, for, same for, thing, for. same thing with, uh, with uh, Paul's sister. Mm -hmm. She got to be in the next movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Very interesting, Venger. Thank you for sending that in, and we'll keep watching it. I'll probably be watching some Dune 2 some more tonight. Uh, Debbie. Star Wars will always be special to me, even with the bad things, which are plenty of. However, it brought me to Coach and Nick, and it brought me to the EBN family. For that, I will always be grateful for Star Wars. Hearts. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Debbie. That's so this, sweet. I, I'm curious, Debbie. Do you remember what video you first watched of ours and what got you to hit the subscribe button? It's the A same as everybody. Luke Skywalker. Oh, the, uh, the uh, mashup. Me and Everybody Nick, me and Nick are here. Me and Nick are. I'm sitting in here. Office was totally different back then. By the way, it, I was facing the other direction, and it wasn't nearly as cool as it is now. <laughs> but uh, I said, I think I'm going to make a montage video. And Nick said, "Do it." And I sat there for 30 minutes and made a montage video. And the next thing you knew exploded yeah. yeah it got to like nine how many uh, montage videos views. do we make zero <laughs> they haven't made anything worthy of making a montage since no they really haven't i mean there really hasn't been anything show movie anything to that's really had like the whole world on fire and or excited about like like nothing mm -mm. no Speaking of excitement, Mr. Dangs has joined 
He is our newest Padawan hey, YouTube awesome. member. Thank you, Mr. Dangs, for joining. We got 22 new members on tonight's yeah. show. Mr. Dangs, welcome to the EBN family. Uh, this video, sir, is for you and all of our people who sent that super chat in. Thank you, buddy. All right, guys, true or false, the original 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie aged very poorly. True. <laughs> I don't think so. I still like it. I, I just saw it probably maybe a year, year and a half ago, maybe. And right. I, I still liked it. I still enjoyed it. I'm going to say, I'm going to pick a fight with you. Now, Thundercats, the original cartoon from the 80s, did not. I You're watched crazy. that. crazy. And I'm like, man, this is kind of dumb. You know. <laughs> okay. You know, sometimes we just continue to watch things with the nostalgia glasses like we're watching it back when we were a kid still. And I think I tend to do that with Ninja Turtles. But if I really take a step back, I'm like, those are obvious suits. The fight scenes really are terrible. Like, I mean, in the first movie's okay. In the second one, had the vanilla ice moment, <laughs> but the third one is horrendous, and I, it's a guilty I've pleasure never, of mine. I've never seen the third one ever. It's horrendous. Never, seen and it. I like it, and I know it's bad, and I'm sitting there going, "Why do I like this?" Coach, you had a clip from one of the movies in the in the pre-show today, and my my reaction when I saw it was, "Oh, the suits, the suits look so bad." <laughs> so, saying all that to say this, Ninja Turtles, an R-rated movie being produced. Yeah, that's uh, the the was it the Ronin? The Ronin, correct? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That, Good that, or bad mm -hmm. idea. It just depends on how they how they do it. Um, Walter Hamada is pretty pretty okay. Walter Hamada has done some pretty good stuff. You know, some things I just can't combine. Like the Ninja Turtles have these crazy pizzas. Some things I can't combine. Some things just don't go together for me. Okay, like like this for instance. I love Batman. Love favorite DC hero. Easy. I can't watch Batman and the Ninja Turtles together. I tried. It's awful. Yeah, that's not a good mixture. It's a terrible mixture. Yeah. Stop. And I don't care if they did it in a comic. Yeah. Um so some things you can put together. Aliens and Predator, you know, Terminator, fits. Robocop, uh, you know, some of those franchises. Debbie, it, Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, was gonna come I, I, I mean, there's several ones like that 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 just they it just works to mesh them together, and others just don't. Uh, the nin the R rated Ninja Turtles thing I think could work. Uh, is this live action or animated? Live, yes. live, action. live action. Live action. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they could really make this thing badass. Uh, with like where Leonardo's actually doing something with his swords instead of swinging and not. Nothing happens. To oh people. yeah, like, like cutting yeah. limbs off. Yeah, yeah. Like, like they could really make this like more realistic if Ninja Turtles were real. <laughs> How about Chucky and Megan? They could that could be a dynamic mixture there for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, chat. Let us know what you think about an R-rated Ninja Turtles. Risman, you got anything you want to say about that? I'm excited. I'm I'm excited to see how how they would do that. But then there's always that footnote of reimagined for the modern audience. It's not in the article. So right? is this going to be CGI turtles like the last 
We live action movie that was terrible. We don't this know. Is where oh, I, this is, so the this Michael is, Bay one. Oh my yeah. gosh, oh, it was so bad. So that's where I'm like, I'm like, not. You've got the reimagined for the modern audience, and then you've got CGI madness, right? So I don't. The R rating I think is intriguing, and and so I'm there for it. Um, we'll Angelina see. says if it's too scary, she's going to have nightmares. I don't I think. It, I don't think it'd be. I don't think they'd be make boring. it scary. I, I think they, they would gear more towards like violence, high action violence, you know, like an old school, like 80s movie, you know, uh, but like, like Gladiator. There's no sex. There's yeah. very little cursing. It's violence. Mm, yeah. It's rated R for that. That's it. You know, um, I, I guess this might be an indication that maybe the era of pulling things from the eighties off the shelf and dusting it off and breathing life into it might be coming to an end. Now we're moving into the nineties. Well, but we, and it was so funny. There's a Mike in the chat who said they need to remake running man. Why have they never remade running man? I said, and they well, are, they are doing that too. Right? Oh, that was, really? That was announced at CinemaCon, a, a reboot wow, a remake okay. of running man. So we're not quite done with the eighties. Some yet, movies but. don't need to be remade. The, the running man. Jason Momoa's Conan did not need to happen. Oh, that was not a good movie. Mm. What? Why would you remake Conan? You think you can make it better? Come on, man. What? What are we doing? Stop remake. Why are you remaking the Never Ending Story? Into Come on, man. More than one. Now, now look. Now I, I can say that. Hell, they remade Dune. Thank goodness. But and and again, I know we sound like a broken record, but it bears repeating. Somebody cared a lot about the remake of Dune, right? Cared a whole lot about how it was oh, produced, yeah. the story, yeah, all the rest good. of it. So, it, so for me, it's not um, it's not so much. Let's not let's not try again for things that came before, but let's do them with the love that Denny and, and some of these other folks have, have shown. Um, I don't know. There's not, a, there's not enough of that going around in my opinion. Nick cycle man 90 said Lizzo will be the running man. Uh, no, she'll be the, the one uh, opera singer, uh, bad guy. You, you remember that from the original movie I do. With, yes, with all I do. the lights yeah. on yes. them? Yes, yes. You know, she'll, she'll be in that suit with all the lights, you know, and Dynamo. she'll be singing. Dynamo. Actually, yeah, yeah, Dynamo. Yeah, she'll oh! be Dynamo. Yeah, he Coach, said that yeah. movie in 20 years. Coach, Got it. The, 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 the chat said Lizzo will be the running ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, no. <laughs> there, she, there she is. There you go. All right, uh, so how about a little positive news? Ready? Ladies and gentlemen, it is here. The 40th anniversary. My gosh, has it been 40 years? Yes. 1984. One of, Long time. Look, the 1980s wouldn't be the 1980s without Transformers. Amen. There's just no way. It was, in my opinion... what Star Wars was for movies. It was the Star Wars for cartoons. Uh, talking about aging poorly, there are several episodes that are kind of difficult to get through. Yeah. But there's a lot of greatness still to this day. And I will never stop loving that franchise. There is a 40th celebration, 40th anniversary celebration happening where you will be able to go next month um, to a local theater and see a table read video with Peter Cullen, who played Optimus Prime, Frank Welker, who played Megatron, and they're going to table read the first episode. And you're going to get to watch the first episode while they do that. And then you get to watch the next three episodes in the series. Now, a lot of people are getting this wrong, Risman. They're saying they're th they're thinking the movie's coming back to the theater. Yeah, it's not the That's movie. not what it is. Yeah. 
It's better than that. Mm -hmm. It's the first four episodes for the show. And if you guys don't remember, um, the first episode, the first three was more than meets the eye. Parts one, two, and three. It was a three-part series. It's like a dang movie when you put all three of them together. I am very excited about being able to go and watch this uh, and, next month. And, and I'm pretty sure they're going to show what they showed at CinemaCon for the um, for the new movie. There's a, They showed a snippet for the new movie at CinemaCon, and I think that's included here as well, right? In, in, well, in the 40th we screen got, that you just, in, you just mentioned. I got you. Well, speaking of the next movie, it's Transformers 1. Yes. And right there, you see Chris Hemsworth's character, Orion Pax. Spoiler, he becomes Optimus Prime. That's right. This character in canon befriended Megatron, was betrayed by Megatron, and the Transformer Alpha Trion takes his dead body and revives him and turns him into the leader that we know and love Optimus Prime. Um, and he was no longer Orion Pax. That's the story. We're getting, we're getting this movie and the trailer was supposed to drop today. And I was, I sat around all day waiting on it. Me too, coach. You and me both. Uh, didn't happen. Now you sent me something that said it was going to happen next week. Another article said the 18th. So what they did at CinemaCon was they showed that trailer and they showed a snippet of the, um, of the movie, which again, I think that snippet of the movie is going to be tacked into the 40th anniversary thing Uh you were just showing. And by the way, I got my ticket. It's not an upcharged ticket. It's just a regularly priced ticket, a ticket at at your, at the theater that's showing it. So you're not with a $10 ticket because I'm going to see it at 12 noon one day. So you're not, you're not paying a, a huge amount of money to see this well, and it's I am going, really... yeah, I'm going with Nick and our brother Matuine, who is here awesome. in chat. Good, yep. We are going to see this. So, Nick, you got to get up a little earlier so we can go eat lunch, or 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 we could just go watch it and then go eat after it. Yeah. I'm down yeah. with that. Yeah, let's do yeah. that. Let's do that. <clears throat> yeah, that'll work because it's one showing only at 12 noon on the weekend, and I think it runs. An hour and forty minutes. All is it told. better? Is it better to eat if you're if you're with a group? Risman, you should you should totally fly in and go with us. Is it better to eat before the movie or after? Because it's just weird to me when you're leaving the movie and you're like, "All right, guys, see y'all later." So I mean, this is just the way it works for me. But I go and see the movie and then I go out to eat afterwards. Yeah, I think that's probably better because at the theater you can grab something to drink, just grab a snack or something to hold you over. Monaco, you we could gra- we could grab something to drink. Yeah, yeah, drink. Yeah, yeah, and the and like I mean, hell, we, they got a sushi bar there in the Monaco. I mean, you, I mean, you can order all kinds of stuff in there. The yeah, the only the only bad thing about it is the Wednesday showing is only at seven o'clock. And then the Saturday and Sunday showings are only at 12 noon. And that's it seems to be irregardless of theater because there are some Cinemarks showing it. It seems like it's primarily AMC, but I was just curious. It seems like it's only 7 o'clock on Wednesday and only 12 noon on the weekend. So for me, like it's what I say, it's going to be a – for me, I'll watch the movie and then I'll go have a bite afterwards. This is May 18th, right? Correct. Very cool. And so we're we're definitely going to go and check this out. And uh, yeah, like, why would you not? So uh, I don't know. It just kind of tells me that Transformers is still relevant today. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, it has a huge following. And they did mention at CinemaCon today that they are actively working on the Transformers G.I. Joe crossover, which was teased. Um, at the end of the last movie so that it does sound like that will also come to fruition which i know they haven't done a great job with gi joe 
appear oh, in live action. Great replay. job. <laughs> Haven't done. Haven't done. They haven't job. even done an average job. They haven't <laughs> done a single good thing. I know. I know. It's Man, G.I. It. Joe would be a good one. Like, you know, you're talking about uh, Ninja Turtles R-rated. G.I. Joe R-rated? Like an oh, 80s oh, yeah. action flick? Uh man sign me up because Hell all yeah. the gi all the gi joe fans from the 80s the, we're all grown adults now so give us a a, a realistic it modern day gi joe with like you know that's like black hawk down or something you know there's too many or characters yeah there's there's too many characters it just you know i just i don't know it's i just i just don't see it ever being it being done Every time they've tried G.I. Joe, it has failed so horribly. I don't know, dude. I know. It's yeah, sad. I'd focus on like on like four or five uh, of the main ones and let all the other characters just be pop in here and there cameos. So what characters would you guys focus on if you were going to make G.I. Joe uh, reboot the series and make it live action? Uh, bad guy or good guy? Uh, well, I mean, just, you got to focus on the good guys. The bad guys are kind of a given. Yeah. You, you um, got to start with Snake Eyes and Duke. Oh well, yeah. But, but the yeah. problem with Snake Eyes is they kind of they kind of already bobbled that ball, right? And the, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of hard to recover from the last yeah, two. I, I, I was talking over. and crap. Like, what are we doing? Mask yeah. off, mask. I'm talking about put leave the mask on. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, I would do Snake Eyes, Duke, Flint, uh, Falcon. My list is Scarlet. gonna kill yours. <laughs> I would go, yes, yeah, cool. I would go. I would go Flint over Duke because they've already done Duke. And I would do Lady J with Flint because there's a love interest there. Yeah. So I would go Flint, Lady J, and then I would go Bazooka, Dusty, and Roadblock. There's some other good ones too, like Gung Ho, Shipwreck. I'm Quick leaving kick. Snake Eyes out. Quick I Kick like, would be great. I, Spirit. I like uh, spirit and freedom. I mean, GI Joe is a DI masterpiece. Yeah, I I think the biggest, like you're saying, with all these, as you name all these characters, and I think to myself, it's been out of the public eye for so long now. Yeah, to bring to bring back a GI Joe movie with any kind of ensemble cast that doesn't just focus on a few characters only. I think people would be so lost right? would be. if, if yeah. the goal is I to try be. and bring people. I would be. <laughs> it's because again, I'm not. For me, it's easier to. to I've held on to Transformers much more easily because they've kept it. They've kept it in our in our minds, right? GI Joe has just kind of been, and again, because Snake Eyes left, left such a bad taste. It's there. It's it's it's, it's a tough, a really really tough for me to think about how could they do it attract new fans and and make it just make it relevant man there's so much story there you talk about a treasure trove of stories if they actually pulled gi joe off and like got it rebooted well then they could do another movie with other characters and have tie-ins they could have a sergeant slaughter and his renegades spin-off movie yeah like there's so much that can be done, and as far as the bad guys go, thousands of of bats, bats, yeah, crimson guards, cobra officers, but then you got like Zartan, Destro, oh yeah, obviously Cobra Commander, the twins, uh, was it Z Tomax and Tomax Zaymont? And yes. Zaymont, yeah. There's so much that could be done, man. Storm Shadow. Which again, you mm -hmm. know, I know. Well, and, and also, I I don't want to 
I won't take us far afield here, right? But remember, G.I. Joe, the great American hero, you know, there there were some things that were very central to that series that sadly I'm not sure hold up so well anymore in if you think about trying to bring that into modern day. So to me, I'm I'm afraid it, it again, it sort of leads them into more of like a an Uber, an Uber clandestine, you know, special forces type. You you know what I mean? It's there was something very mainstream about it, I guess is what I'm trying to say, when it was out in the 80s and very relevant to what was happening then that yeah. doesn't fit well now. All right, so I have to ask, like, golly, dude, we're talking about two franchises that are beloved, especially in this house, like in this room, you know, by the way, I'm heading to Nashville in about nine days to go pick up a G.I. Joe collection. Oh, wow. There and I believe I'm going to buy a build, a new display case to go right here to match that one. And it's going to be the whole G.I. Joe collection right there. Is this the collection that had all the vehicles or is this a different collection? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. It is. So I'm excited about it. Um, golly, I keep, I keep getting closer to 50 and I keep buying more toys. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what's wrong with me? you're not going to buy them now. When are you going to buy them? I know. All right. So, all right, guys, can a live action GI Joe Transformers crossover movie work? It, with the I people think, running the current one? No. Well, if they let the guy run it who ran who has a love of this stuff like we do, who who pulled off the last um, Transformers movie. Beast Wars. Beast. Beast uh, I, what, be, was Whatever it was. Beast? Yeah, Beast, Rise of the Beast. I haven't um, seen it. Was it any good? I liked it. I mean, I, I didn't like the fact there was no Decepticons, but there weren't supposed to be Decepticons in that in that movie. But the guy who ran it, he's a he really loves the stuff and he's really into it. In some ways, Coach, I think, the crossover might minimize some of the problems I was just speaking about, right? In regards to GI Joe, what it what it has stood for, how how you could get around some problems, you know, why they might team up and and all this sort of thing. I think they can pull it up, pull it off rather. Um, They've you know, gotten I, the Transformers. Yeah, it, it the trans. You know, and since Michael Bay has kind of distanced himself from what's yeah. going on, they've made the Transformers look way better now yeah. optimus actually looks a lot more like optimus now instead of the bay verse mm -hmm. you know which i matthew hate loathe as well can't watch oh, them hate. never watch them again i cannot stand michael bay what they did to Can megatron i thought megatron looks horrible in those you know movies. you know what pissed me off from the get-go not casting frank welker as megatron Still oh, pisses, yeah. It still pisses him off to this day. I can tell you firsthand, having talked to him about it, he's still he's still butthurt about <laughs> that it. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I. How are you gonna go get? And he wasn't gonna get Colin, but it was the fan demand that made him go do it. He didn't know jack about Transformers. Nothing. No. 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 The, the only Michael Bay films I've ever really liked has been uh, the first two bad boy movies. Armageddon was good. Pearl Harbor. Um, Did he do are, Independence Day? I don't think so. Um, I think he did. I don't think he did. You know, You know what my favorite Michael Bay movie is? The Rock. Oh yes, The Rock. That's the other one I was I was Sean Connery. And, yeah, and that they, movie was Rock awesome. It's not a tourist attraction. That, to yes. me, that's my favorite Michael Bay movie. Yeah, that one. That movie was awesome. Yeah, I like that one. Oh. Uh, Roland Emmerich. You were right, Nick. You were right. I stand corrected. Well, I don't know, guys, but it's been fun. I don't like. There's not a single Michael Bay movie I like. Not oh, you don't like The Rock. You don't like The Rock. It's all right. Sean Connery kicked ass. In yeah, that movie. that movie was awesome. He did. Yeah. He did. 
Okay. I'm, yeah, I, I've seen it like twice, and I'll probably never watch it again. Yeah, I've it's seen probably that movie the one. I, it's probably the one I like the most that he's done. I've seen that movie a lot of times. Gosh. You didn't like Pearl Harbor with uh, Ben Affleck? No, I thought that movie was was pretty good. I liked that it was well produced. I yeah, when the Japanese attack, man, that whole battle scene uh, was freaking awesome. It was a heart. You, it was a heartbreaking movie. I know. Yeah. I do remember that. I mean, isn't was, Michael Bay like the most accomplished, one of the most accomplished directors? I think I've looked this up before. I think he's like number one or number two of the most the directors whose movies have made the most money. Uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't he's doubt that. Way, he's way up there. Uh, no, I do not like Armageddon at all. That is Armageddon to me. I don't like Armageddon. Yeah. That movie is yeah. trash. I liked it. There was parts of it I didn't like, but uh, uh that movie had a good oh, soundtrack no. going for it. That's it. Yeah. That's true. Yep. All right, everybody. Well, look, we've been going a little over two hours. Been a great show. Had a great time. We appreciate you being here. Uh, Nick, you want to do any housekeeping before we uh, hit the uh, EBN cast tomorrow afternoon from two to three? Um, uh, and I think that's the only thing I can think of. Uh, uh, yeah, Patreon, uh, I did finally get, I did finally get, um, X-Men uploaded, a uh, bad batch will be up there tomorrow. Thoughts uh, on X-Men episode five, episode five, it had a crazy ending to it. I'm not going to spoil it for those who haven't seen it, but, uh, the first half of the episode, meh. <laughs> Second half of the episode. Oh, I'm interested. I'm like, what they okay, did, I'm interested. Yeah, what's going on here? I think then, big things are about to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, to what Rissman was saying, Michael Bay is number five on the list. He, I is, he was way up there. Yep. Steven Spielberg is number one. His movies have brought in over $10 billion. James Cameron, two with over eight billion Russo brothers, three over six, Peter mm. Jackson, four over six, Michael Bay, right behind Peter Jackson and Russo brothers at six, five. I mean, he's right underneath of them. And then uh, Nolan is and David Yates are below Michael Bay, but Steven well, Spielberg. Number yeah, one. They, you just wait till they get a load of Charmaine Obey Chinoy. Oh and, yeah, she's gonna she's gonna have work for the. I mean, she's gonna be she's putting gonna out show bangers. them men how to do it. Yeah, bangers. She likes making right. them uncomfortable. And yeah. coach, before we, before we break, we have two super chats we missed. Oh, let's go. Yeah, let's get super chat. Prince Jay's out with another twenty dollars. Hey, he's guys. trying to give it all back, Nick. <laughs> have you guys seen Godzilla X Kong: The New Empire? If so, what were your thoughts? That two hundred ninety nine dollars super chat really helped Nick. God bless. <laughs> no, I've problem. not seen the movie. Uh, I've uh, not seen the movie either. Um, but he has. Yeah, of course uh, I have. Are you kidding? He loved it. Yeah, it was. It's not a good movie. This no. movie is not a good movie, but it's very fun to watch. Oh. Right, but but the, the 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 people in the movie exist to totally over over x you know just pontificate on exactly what's going to happen plot wise and go yeah. here and do this and now we need to and they're constantly there to remind us of these things so godzilla minus one is far superior is what you're saying oh but total two different total two totally different movies godzilla minus one is all about the human element and there's a godzilla this movie is all about king kong and his what he was trying to do and there is a godzilla part of it but it's primarily a kong movie but if you want to see Titans kicking ass and throwing them, so, you know, if you want to see the good fighting, uh, that's what I say. It's a lot of fun to watch, but it's not a good movie. Okay, all right. Well, I went and saw. Out. Thank you, bro. I went and saw uh, the first Omen oh. uh, this weekend. This Nick, have you seen Dune Part Two? Yeah. You did. Yeah. You, you uh, never talked to me about it. 
two i thought i did yeah two two weekends ago oh do you me like and it? uh me and crazy pants went and saw it no oh. did, did you like it uh yeah 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 it was it wasn't bad yeah um I thought it was a little bit slow in some parts, but uh, but all in all, yeah, I liked it. I thought it was I thought it was good. Great. All right, Sandrock, five dollars. Just getting off work now. Seeing the title, yes, Star Wars has a glaring girl problem that won't go away. Kennedy wants everything to be in her image. Ooh. Seems that she, way. No, it's definitely that way. Yeah, she's even talked about it. I was a camera woman, and if you look today, there are no women doing it. We need a Star Wars director that is a female. Blah, 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 blah. Like, she tells us the agenda every couple years, and then she successfully carries it out. Killing she the franchise. She hadn't, she's gone quiet again, though, hadn't she? She hadn't, that's said what she always does. Thing. She's not said very much since she's taken the position. No, she hasn't said very much at all. I have we even heard anything from her since not Indiana since Jones dropped? Yeah, it, that's exactly right. It was Celebration, <laughs> then Indiana Jones, then not a peep. Yep, everything's fine, situation normal. Yep, everything's fine here. Situation normal. <laughs> she must have the easiest job as a CEO because the company doesn't appear to be doing anything. Right? What are they doing? What are they doing that they even require? <laughs> that they even require management at this point? <laughs> I, I, I would be the imperial uh, officer right now asking Disney, hey, what's your operating number here? Right. Uh, like, like, like what, what, what's going on? Like, this, none of this adds up. But I mean, yeah. seriously, think about think about it for a minute. They're not actively making any movies. They they have no series, and Andor is in post production. But as far as we know, they have no series in production. Seriously, what are they? What? what why does they, do they need any employees at this moment? They're not doing anything. Yeah, it's wild, absolutely wild. I uh, yeah. I mean, people at Lucasfilm are basically just getting a free paycheck. Did you guys see? <clears throat> I can't remember. I think I showed it on EBN cast, but the Lucasfilm uh, employee gross salary chart no? uh -oh. for all the employees on how much money they make. It, it's it's a, it, yeah, it's insane. <clears throat> it's insane how much money they're paying these people. And they're not doing anything. They're not making. They're not making Disney no money. Some something tells me Lucasfilm is probably a company that's very top heavy and has very little line personnel. So I, I often wonder how big the company really is over and above the execs and directors that we see posted on on their page, mm -hmm. and how many of the rest of them are just interns or. You know what I mean? I it, it because again, what I what I just said, you wouldn't need a large staff to do nothing. Yeah. And then when you need the staff, you bring them in, you do what you need to do as contra as contractors, and then they go away. I don't think it's a yeah. big company. It well, it, in in actuality, it's really not a big company. Uh, I mean, Lucasfilm has two thousand employees. Really? That's more than I thought it would have. Yep two two thousand. Okay. It, but I mean that's that's worldwide, so okay. um, you know the majority of those are probably in California. Um, also, um, a lot of people don't know this: Skywalker Ranch does not belong to Disney. That is George's. Yeah. He owns it. He has some space at Skywalker Ranch that Disney pays rental fees to him every month to rent out space there. Uh, but he one he they did Luke D, Disney did not get Skywalker Ranch in the buyout of Star Wars. All and they that got kind of make, that kind of makes sense, right? Because don't they still produce wine there, and they they do other things at yeah. Skywalker Ranch that has nothing to do with with Disney or, yep. or Lucasfilm. Yep. Makes sense. Yep, and the average employee 
at Lucasfilm makes a little over seventy five thousand. Mm. Um, but some of the low tier, I, I don't have the chart in front of me, otherwise I'd show up. But some of the low tier ones are literally like they must be part timers or something because they're they're like right around like uh, 25, 30,000, you know. Uh, but some of the top tier, like 3D artists and all that, they're all well over 120,000, you know, uh, Makes sense. a year. So, I mean, you know, 2,000 coach, quick math, 2,000 employees, average uh 76 thousand what does that come out to be two thousand times it's two thousand so two thousand times seventy six thousand good well, god just say seventy seven too many zeros for me 152 million uh so just to staff the company is costing them 152 million a year around about that um just to just to staff uh, you know, so not only are the budgets that they put into their, uh, into their projects had to be budgeted and paid for that they have to earn money back on, but also all the staff, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know how Kathleen Kennedy still has a job. Well, and also if, if part of that employees is ILM, I don't know if they're included in Lucasfilm or their, their own thing, but you know, ILM gets contracted out to do work for other folks, which brings them revenue also. So, so some of those, some of those salaries might, if, if it's included, some of that might get defrayed by the fact that ILM does work for other folks. Uh, ILM is separate from Lucas okay. uh, film and they have 2,053 employees currently. Whoa. So okay. they, they, they have more people than Lucasfilm does. Yeah. And that makes sense, right? Because because I can see them doing work. They do work for oh, other yeah. people. It takes so much yeah. effort to do for what all they kinds do. of films and yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What is, coach, what I coach, have no what, idea. I just coach, it's coach just... got chewy. By the way, here's a, here's we can close on this. Has Chewie been walking around naked all this time? Because the because the because the Wookie in uh, the Wookie oh yeah the acolyte, acolyte has, is wearing clothes. Has, so yeah, has like Chewie some shorts or some out and about the whole on. time. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that dumb acolyte. <laughs> yep. Oh, is that popcorn in bed? No. Something. Anyways, oh, she must be a pan pansexual. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, everybody, we appreciate y'all being here. I guess I can turn off my little funnies now. Oh, I redid mine. How dare you? She's a nice lady. <laughs> the hangout. Was... All right, everybody. Hey, we appreciate y'all. Great show. Thank y'all for being here. Um, that's going to do it for us. More content rolling out and, uh, EB and cast tomorrow. Yep. M Matt, thank you for everything as always. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me as always. Thank thanks to the DA and, uh, peace, love, and the force. Yep. See you guys tomorrow afternoon. See y'all. Take care. Here it is. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Network, thank you so much for being here with us tonight at Echo Base TV, where community happens. If the coffin don't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> <laughs>